bizarre world evolves and the demand of resources gets just too damn high, we need to start finding a new resource. Something renewable. Something that we already have tons of. And something that we all know how to use. Lego. Over the past few years, I have been on the search for putting Lego to the ultimate test. Lego bricks have a much larger potential than to just be used as toys. We've already seen how well Lego is able to hold up against loads of stress, how it can be resistant to weathering, and now we will finally come to the conclusion by finding the best way to destroy Lego. To begin, we will once again look at ABS, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. In the past, we've seen how the properties of ABS affect Lego's strength and weaknesses. This time, we will take advantage of these weaknesses and try to destroy LEGO. LEGO requires a lot of structural strength and rigidity, which it gets from the butadiene rubber in ABS. The acrylonitrile provides heat and chemical resistance, though it doesn't rely on it. The styrene will give the brick a good look and keep it shiny. High amounts of butadiene rubber may make the LEGO withstand a lot of force, but it makes it very flammable and lower amounts of acrylonitrile might leave it vulnerable to strong acids. With this in mind, to finally figure out the best way to destroy Lego bricks, we have to put it to the test. To start off, I took a Lego brick at control temperature and burned it. After almost 6 minutes, it became a black pile of stuff. I did the same thing to a brick that was exposed to negative 18 degrees Celsius. And you could see the ice there. It took a lot longer for the fire to start, and it kept burning out. And eventually, we just gave up because of how much longer it took. To test the chemical resistance, I exposed the Lego bricks to acids of different pH levels for 24 hours. The first acid was drain cleaner which contained hydrochloric and sulfamic acid. It had a pH of under 1. The second acid was just your regular vinegar, and I used lemon juice as citric acid. I also did the same tests for the colder temperature. After the 24 hours, nothing really happened, but some luster from the bricks was lost. Now I did one final test to see how well the butadiene rubber stood up against loads of force. Using a rubber mallet, I tried to just smash the bricks into little bits. And surprisingly, this was very effective. <laughs> For the brick with the controlled temperature, it took 5 hits in total with a few at the start before it broke a lot. It ended up in small and large chunks. Now with the colder brick, just like with anything else, it was much easier to break. Right on the first hit, it split in half and it took 3 hits in total to end up with the same result as the first brick. In the end, there were a lot of smaller chunks. So now we have all of those tests done, we can take a look at the results. Overall, the fire and the rubber mallet made the best results, but if we were to choose just one, the mallet would be the way to go. It's much easier to start unlike the fire, and it took much less time. Although LEGO contains lots of butadiene, we shouldn't expect it to hold up easily under all of that stress. LEGO bricks are also thin and hollow, so its structure is probably a reason as to why it broke easier. So overall, the best way to destroy it is by straight up brute force. Simple. So now we finally destroyed LEGO and we figured out the best ways to do so. We're coming to an end now. We have to remember that all this just started out with the idea of using LEGO as a building material. If we compare our results to other building materials, LEGO does a pretty good job. Wood burns very easily and metal will crack under lots of stress. This is normal, but to watch these bricks go through all of that abuse, that goes far beyond its intended use, 
we can say that for a toy, Lego's strength is just too damn high. I hope you all enjoyed watching, and I'll see you guys next time.